Hello everyone. Today we're going to talk about the range and phase control parameters for your Newton Echo Sounder. So as we mentioned previously, to activate your different menus, you can go up to the control box, select which one you want, uh, and it'll appear down on the left-hand side, probably docked below your main control parameters, or you can activate it from the, the quick menu select here. So depending on your monitor and your resolution, you may have to scroll down a little bit to see the menu down below your control box. So first off, as I mentioned, this is the range and the phase control parameters. And those two work hand in hand to create the search window that you're going to establish for your echo sounder to look for and obtain the bottom. So a way I use it to remember it is the range is going to be the amount of information on the screen at any point in time. It's going to define the size of your search window. The phase is going to tell you where in the water column that search window is going to appear. So for example, right now I currently have a range set up of 20. So it's creating a phase from 0 to 20 meters is now my search window. So you can see here, if I go down to the phase parameter and I activate the arrows button, as I click one down, it'll move my search window. Now my search window is appearing from 10 meters to 30 meters. So I'm still maintaining a 20 meter size because that's my range setting, but I've now moved that further down into the water column. If you see here, the another setting is called overlap at 50%. So if you'll notice, every time I move the window down, it's not jumping from a 0 to 20 meter window automatically down to a 20 to 40 meter window. It's doing an overlap of 50% of the range each time. So in this case, 20 meter range, an overlap of 50% is 10 meters. So each time it's moving my window down 10 meters, but it's still maintaining that 20 meter size. What this allows you to do is to maintain a smaller search window, therefore increasing your resolution of your return signal. Um, you're going to get more detail out of some of the different layers because you've got a smaller window and you're able to zoom it in and move it down into the water column. So one trick to this would be now that I've set up my window and I have a small 20 meter window somewhere down the water column, in this case from 30 to 50 meters, the question is what happens if my bottom depth all of a sudden goes past my 50 meters? Now if this is the case, what's going to happen is the echo sounder is only going to look between the parameters you have set up. So in that case, it's going to become confused and, say, and try to recognize where that bottom is. So a feature that we've put in is under the phase mode is being able to turn it to auto. So what that will do is as you go back and you get to that same spot where your depth is starting to get to the bottom of your search window, the echo sounder will recognize that and it'll go ahead and it'll move down to the next window. So it's a bit of a hands-free operation. If you're working with your data logging package, you've got other things on the go, this is one thing that you don't have to worry about the bottom being lost out of your search window because it's going to be constantly adjusting based on your auto phase. The next parameter we have down here is called a shift threshold. So where that comes into play is let's say we've got our window set up here from 0 to 20 meters and our bottom is starting to get deeper and deeper. We're now going 17, 18 meters. We're getting close to the bottom. The shift threshold is going to tell the system when to trigger to move to the next window or the next phase. So basically, in this case here, if we're set up with a th shift threshold of 10%, so 10% of a 20 meter range is 2 meters. So what that means is as my bottom hits 18 meters, it's going to trigger and move down to the, next, to the next window. Same thing as it gets within 10%, if it starts getting shallower, it'll move up to the next one. So those are the parameters that you can adjust. The depth limits set for default is minimum maximum of 0 and 5,000. So this comes into play in a couple of different places. So let's say, for example, you've set your depth limits for a maximum of 100 meters. What that means is the size of the ranges is now limited. So you can see as I toggle through, you only have the option to go up as high as 100 meters as your largest range. If you have it set larger, larger ranges become available. So just be careful if that somebody when you're working with this that you don't set your depth limit too small because that also limits the size of your range. Where this also comes into play with your auto phase 
is let's say for example you're working an auto phase and something goes under the transducer the boat movement prop wash whatever and you lose your echo if your auto if your minimum maximum settings are set from zero to something as large as 5,000 and your range is set for let's say 50 meters what's gonna happen is the system is gonna go through every possible range and phase search window combination between zero and 5,000 meters trying to reacquire that bottom so this would take depending on depth of water you're in and your ping rate this could take a couple of seconds for it to reacquire by reducing your depth limits down to something more if you're never going to be in more than 500 meters of water set it to 500 meters because what that's going to do is it's going to speed up your acquisition time if you are working in auto phase mode and you do lose the bottom so again minimum maximum settings will determine the largest range that you can have available, but it will also determine the speed of your reacquisition time if you're working in auto phase. So one last thing I want to mention here about the range and phase combination is something we'd mentioned earlier, the primary channel that's located up in your control box. So again, let's use the example that you're on a window from 0 to 20 meters. But for the particular application you're working on, let's say here with your 28 and 200, Maybe your 28 is actually digitizing on a layer that's 2 meters deeper than your 200. So as those two returns are getting closer to the bottom of your window, which one of those returns do you want to be the trigger that's going to move to the next range? If you're concentrating on your 200 kilohertz data, then you're going to want to have that channel as its primary. What that means is as it gets lower, it's going to use it to be the trigger at, at 18 meters or whichever you were to your th shift threshold before you move down to your next window. If you have it set for the low frequency channel, then when the lower, your sub bottom layer triggers onto that, it will then move. So just keep that in mind that if you're really concentrating on tracking, let's say your lower frequency channel, you want to make sure that that is going to be your trigger for your primary channel as you get deeper. That way you're not going to lose any visual information in your echogram. So just again quickly, your range is going to be the size of your search window. Your phase is going to be where it's located in the water column. Your overlap is how much overlap you're going to get between each one of the phases as you lower into the water column. Your shift threshold is going to be what triggers to move to the next window. And then, as we mentioned earlier, your minimum maximum depths affect both your range size and your auto phase reacquisition time. That's it for now. We'll talk to you again soon. Thank you.